What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Knives of the Round Table. And this time we're gonna be reviewing the Shirogorov Knives Kami. Now, if you're familiar with Shirogorov Knives, you know that all of their blades, the F3, the Quantum, the F95, the 111, they all have the same looking blade. It is a very minimalistic, a drop point with a flat grind. If you look at one of their blades, they're incredibly well made, but they are, they all look the same. They are, uh, you can tell they're Shirogorov, they are very utilitarian, they're awesome, but they all look the same. So when the chance came uh, for me to, to get the Kami, I traded my Quantum for the Kami uh, with, with Knife Sergeant, uh, I gave him my quantum and some cash and he gave me the cami. I jumped on it for two reasons. First, the blade on the cami is is kind of different from everything else Shirogorov does. It's uh, it's a sheep's foot, you know, with with like a kind of reverse tanto looking thing, a swedge. It just has a lot more interesting aspects. And, and I like my blades to have a little bit more, uh, more panache, if you will. So I traded my my quantum special because it had my quantum had a four inch blade, and I don't like uh, that larger that, la that larger blade. I sh probably shouldn't have bought it, but you know I I couldn't resist the you know when 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 I had the chance to buy the quantum, but I was actually fairly fortunate to be able to trade to trade for for this one. Uh, so this one is a, especially smaller than the quantum. So. This has overall size of about eight inches, and the blade is just over three and a quarter inches. So this is right in my sweet spot of of, of blade size. Three and a quarter is is just it. It's exactly where I'd like. If I were to design a knife, that's where that's that's the size that it would be. It's a titanium frame lock uh, with a, you know interesting uh, uh, hardware. It's got all of this uh, kind of topographic uh, milling uh, about it that looks it, that makes it look really really nice. It has a very interesting uh, backspacer in that the screws go in this way into the handle scales, and there's nothing else in the back. And they've incorporated a lanyard hole into that, so I think that's that's incredibly well done. I think that's that's very very. Uh, ingenious if you will and especially the blue screws that looks that looks phenomenal um, the blade is a s110v let me try and show you that yeah so they they say that I don't know if you can tell right in the middle it's s110v so incredibly premium steel and and it's a collaboration uh, with Dmitry Sinkovich. Uh, so it's a Sinkovich design, and it's kind of one of the only reasons why the blade shape is different from a lot of other Shirogorov knives that you that you may have seen. So let's let's jump in here and let's do some size comparison so you kind of have an idea of, of, of the size of the knife. That's the mini bug out, and that's the Benchmade uh, full size bug out. So a little bit bigger than the than the full size bug out, uh, not by not by much. Um, it's it's a little bit longer uh, in both the blade and the handle, but it it handles it handles relatively uh, well, uh, uh, especially because it's not a thick knife. This has a relatively thin blade. It's still a little bit thicker than the than the bug out because the bug out is just ridiculously slicey. But uh, I would say. That this one carries, uh, it carries really small in the pocket. Because, like, if you compare it with the, with the pair two, you know, you can see that the pair two is it, it 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 almost looks like a like a monster. Besides it, I mean, it's it it almost looks like the pair three is a better uh, size. Although the blade size, the sharpened blade length. So the 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 cami has more sharpened blade length than the pair two, even though handle wise the the cami is is smaller than the than the pair two. If I compare them in 
when they're closed, you can see that the cami carries much, much smaller than, than the pair two. It's, it, it carries really, really well in the pocket. It's, it's a small, it's slim, but you still get a three and a quarter inch blade, which makes it a really, really useful. Um, ergonomics on the knife. Ergonomics, I'm call, I'd call them decent. Uh, in, in my size of hands, the space between the flipper tab and this final uh, curve here, my hands fits, uh, fits perfectly. I don't feel it like it fits like a glove, especially because it's a smaller knife. It's small in this dimension and it's thin, so it kind of disappears in my hand. So I would call the ergonomics decent, uh, but not, not nothing not nothing great. Uh, I'd say that there's there's definitely knives out there that that have better ergonomics. Uh, you get okay ergonomics when you have more of a neutral handle. You know when you don't have finger grooves and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And that's, you know, they do them like that so that if it's a more, uh, a, a larger range of hands, you know, small hands, big hands, fat hands, whatever. Um, so that helps with that. But, you know, it's jack of all trades, master of none, right? If it fits many, many hands, it's most likely that no one size hand will say it's a great fit. Uh, I forgot to mention, it does have a lock bar insert uh, as part of uh, its features and the scales are milled internally, but they're milled, uh, I would say, an adequate amount, okay? This one doesn't, doesn't feel hollow. It doesn't feel like they, they, like they the overdone uh, the milling inside. Now, the action. Man, the action is, uh, is sweet and sour. It, it has a really good deployment action, and it has tremendous drop shot action. The only problem is that you have to think about it because if you so much as look in the direction of this lock bar, you will not be able to deploy the knife. So it, you have to uh, uh, position your hands such that you never come near the lock bar. And that's a problem because I like to fidget with my knives and a lot of times uh, fidgeting is kind of a mindless act. You know, you're just, you know, flipping and closing, flipping and closing, whatever. And what I find in myself is that I grab the knife and I try go to flip it and my hands uh, fall naturally because it's a small knife, they fall naturally on that lock bar. And as soon as you touch it, 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 it you touch it and it doesn't, it does not deploy no matter how hard you, 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 you push uh, or you flick the, the flipper tab. So if you have your hands in the right position, it deploys awesome, it closes beautifully. I would say that, you know, the closing is just amazing. But the problem is that deployment, the, the fact that if you so much as, as, as blow on this thing, uh, it, will, it will not deploy. So I would call the action excellent with, with a little star uh, that, that you have to be careful of where, you, where your hands go on, on, on this one. Fit and finish. Well, fit and finish. <laughs> with with, with Shirogor of Knives, uh, it's, it's no longer even a question. Uh, they have uh, probably the best fit and finish of any production knife uh, in the world. Um, they, the, the milling is excellent. The pocket clip is, is so well done. You know, the, the way they've done this backspacer, you know, where the screws go into the scale from the back, that's that's just remarkable. I think, I think that's a really good idea. It makes the knife so clean, so open. Uh, and, you know, the blade, it comes perfectly centered. There's no, there's no blade play, obviously, anywhere up and down, side to side. Uh, <clears throat> the hardware is 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 beautifully made it's beautifully finished i wish that the pivot was a little bit brighter uh you know you see the blue in the in these back screws i wish that you get the same blue here uh, but i still think it looks uh, the contrast is, is 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 really well done now something that is very interesting and uh i'll talk about it a little bit more in in cutting but uh, one of the things that makes this blade very interesting is that the the grind 
is asymmetrical. And I don't know if you noticed it already with my flipping it, but on this side of the knife, you have a flat grind here, or, uh, or the flat, not the flat grind, but the flat. And then you have a primary bevel in this area that goes down to your, to your secondary bevel. But on this side, you have the flat, and then you have one primary, a second uh, dairy, and then you get down to your really thin uh, uh, tertiary bevel, I guess it's what you would call it. I, I'm not sure <laughs> because you get, you definitely get a flat one, two levels, and then the, the final uh, edge, where, whereas here, you just get the flat one level and the, and the edge. And this, because it's one of those, uh, it's, it's kind of a special edition. It came with a mirror edge. I'm not sure if you can tell the mirror edge. Uh, you know, I'll, here, I'll, I'll try and, and, and hold something up against it. Can you tell the reflection? It came with a beautiful mirror edge. Now, I can sharpen my knives to a mirror edge. I've, I've gotten quite proficient at it, but this, this was on a different level. This was sharpened to a mirror edge by a professional and I, I, I've never seen a, a secondary bevel shine quite like this one does. I have my knives in a, in a, in a display case that show LEDs and the, and the secondary bevel just, 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 just shines everywhere. It's, it's so well done. It's incredible. Uh, I think again, fit and finish on sure gore of knives. It's, it's, it's the best I've seen. And I compare it to, uh, to Rekinder, to Chris Reeve, to, to, to Grimsmo, to uh, Custom Knife Factory, I think Shirogorov has the best fit and finish out of all of them. Cutting. Well, cutting is actually really, really good with this one. Uh, so it has a, th a thin blade, and because it came screaming sharp out of the box, because it comes with this crazy, crazy sharp edge uh, with a mirror edge, and because it is an S110V, it cuts like a charm, and it'll probably cut like a charm for as long as I have it. I'm not sure what's gonna happen when I have to sharpen it. I'm, I've never sharpened an asymmetrical uh, edge. I'm not sure because I, I use a, a fixed system that rotates the blade, but that puts the same secondary angle on both sides of the blade. I, I'm not sure what happens with, with this one. I think this might just need to go back to Shurgarov to get sharpened. But again, it's this 110V, so, you know, eh, with as large as my collection is, this probably gets carried once a month, maybe. It'll be, it'll be a couple of years before, before I see any, any, any need for, for blade sharpening. It cuts, it cuts incredibly well. So the airing of grievances, what I don't like about the knife. Well, I, I briefly touched on, on the lock bar. Man, I I think that's that's the biggest one. I this would be a damn near perfect knife if if I could just mindlessly uh, uh, flick open this knife and close it. But as it is, I need to think about it. I need to position my fingers such that they're either on the clip or or down here, and that's not where my fingers land naturally. So I really need to think about it. But once you do, you know it still opens and closes especially the closing, it's just so good. But I, man, I wish that, that, the, that the lock bar uh, detent was, uh, was a little bit different. Now, the other thing, and one of my big gripes with the knife is, is the proprietary hardware. Now, I don't mind proprietary hardware when they give me the, the tools to do it, but in this case, the tool to do it is not sold. I mean, it's not, it's not given to you with this knife and it's, this is an expensive knife. The bits come with a pen that you have to buy and it's another 300 and some odd dollars to get the, the, the bit for that and for that. And the pen is, is a really bad pen. Uh, the, the mechanical action on it is not good. They, I, I don't think they do a good job with pens. Uh, and you have to buy the pen in order to, to, to be able to disassemble your knife and maintain it. 
So, you know, not only is it proprietary hardware, not only do they not give you the bits, they sell it to you with a pen that is expensive and that it's that it's not a good pen. You know, because one thing would be to uh, to say, well, you know, it's an expensive pen, but it's a really, really good pen. That's not the case here. So you have to buy the pen just to get the bits, and it's just I I just I just don't like that at all. So I think my experience with the Kami, you see, I couldn't deploy it there. I think it, it's unique enough that I think it'll remain as part of my collection for a while. I'm not sure it's a forever knife for me. Um, and I think if you have a, a little bit smaller hands, maybe the, the, the detent and the action and the lock bar issues uh, won't be a problem for you. Uh, if that's the case, or if you say, you know, look, I can train myself to, to avoid the lock bar, if you can avoid the lock bar, then I would say this is a phenomenal knife uh, to have in in a collection. So, uh, you know, all in all, uh, I I think, you know, the quality, the cutting, the materials, the fit and finish, all of those things are really really good. Uh, my only two gripes are, you know, touching the lock bar and uh, and the proprietary hardware. All right, well guys, there you have it, a review of the Shiro Gorov. Cami, if you liked it, if I've earned it, like, subscribe, and until I see you again, take care.